everyone, I'm Liz Gillespie and welcome back for another season of B News Sports Hub. As you all know, we abruptly stopped production of the show back in March due to the coronavirus pandemic, which has been affecting everything around the world. And now that we're entering the fall, students will return to school with new plans and procedures in place. This month, we'll have a discussion with the Burlington High School Athletic Director, Sean Hart, about what the plans for the modified Red Devils sports season will be. And that's all right here, right now, on this month's B News Sports Hub. Awesome, now let's talk about sports. I'm here with my guest, Mr. Hart. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Awesome, so first things first, there are really high risk levels going into sports now. So what are some of the risk levels of the sports that we have in school? So a couple things. Um, again, you know, really high risk levels everywhere. And you know, I think that the first thing that everybody's trying to do right now is we're trying to just make sure that Everything we do in the school right now is about making sure that student safety, staff safety, coaches safety, you know, all of those things are being kind of piled into one big, you know, area and we're just trying to work ourselves through it because, you know, I know that everybody thinks that everybody has the answers, but really like yeah. <laughs> every time something happens, it's like, it's a new something and yeah. you just made 10 plans to do one thing and then it changes changes like every week five minutes later yeah exactly I mean? so, so i feel like we've been up against a lot of that um the state started uh again we back in in march when everything got canceled in the first place and i think they tried to hold on hold on hold on um because they didn't want to say it's canceled because nobody knew yeah exactly you know so then we got to the summer and people started working and then i think the biggest piece of the whole thing was is that it was very difficult to say let's move on with sports before people knew how they were going to move on with school. Yeah. You know, to say to a student athlete that you can start practicing in August when we weren't going back to school until the middle of September yeah. didn't make sense. That's a little weird, yeah. So again, I feel like everybody feels that there has been no answers mm -hmm. and they're all right. Because mm -hmm. every time you think you have an answer, there's a new problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that those are the kinds of things. So I think everybody's trying to feel their way through it. So I think the good news is, is that I don't know that I've been part of athletics for a long time and I don't know that there has been a more clear and concise road or a map to try and follow ever. Yeah. Which, which I think puts us in a good light. And again, I, I, I was listening to not too long ago, um, Dr. Conti said, and, and he's been great. Mr. Sullivan's mm -hmm. been amazing. Like every, uh, amazingly supportive administration to try and get as many opportunities for kids as we can get. You know, and, and that's a really nice place to come to work every day knowing that, you know, you have everybody wants you guys in red devil uniforms oh, yes. everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, it's pretty cool. But essentially what he said, and, and I heard him, and I don't even know if you remember saying it or not, but he said that, you know, we've never had an opportunity in education or athletics to hit the reset button. That's true. Yeah. So when you actually look at it in that, kind, and again, when you put it under the guise of a pandemic, you have to think about the seriousness and the, and, the, and the deaths that are happening and you have to, you know, you clearly have to look at it through that lens. But if somebody were to say to us, you have six months to shut everything down and rebuild some of the things that you've always wanted to rebuild, Ooh. it would have been a really great opportunity for us because if you look at it through a positive oh, lens yeah. rather than a negative lens. That's kind of cool. So I think we've been trying to do that in the athletic world. I know we have in the school world, trying to do some of those things. Um, and again, like I said, you know, it's trying to open up opportunities, things that we've never had a chance to change. This may give us an opportunity to do some of those things. Wow, cool. So what are some of the risks about each individual sport? <laughs> <laughs> well, aside from the inherent risks that already live in sports, see, that's the funny yeah. part about this whole thing. Um, again, you've played, I've played, you know, the bottom line is, is every time you walk out onto a field or out onto a court, you know yeah. already that there is an inherent risk in what you're doing. Of course. So I think for athletes, the good news is, is that we've already dealt with a lot of those things and now it's just another level yeah. that goes in the back of our heads. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like 
Um, again, when you're looking at certain sports, so right off the bat, they took um, they took football, which was in the highest risk category. Yeah. They took cheerleading, um, competitive cheerleading, which was in the higher risk category. Mm-hmm. And I think, again, when you start thinking about it, the number of contacts per mm-hmm. per play, exactly. per event, you know what I mean? Like the cheerleaders run a three and a half minute routine and there is somebody touching, spotting, mm-hmm. moving uh, across somebody's area every second of that three and a half minutes. Exactly. You know? So with football, you know, even though there's stoppages in play, there's a tackle on every play. So they put those in the highest category and then they moved from high to moderate to low. Yeah. And they kind of figured how they could make some modifications. So that's the stage we're in right now. Um, it's taking each one of the sports, applying a set of modifiers that could help us play it. Mm-hmm. And that gets you to a lower category that gives you another set of oh, things yeah. that you have to do. And then we kind of try and get to a finished product. Wow. So the football season has been moved to February. Is that the current plan right now? Uh, football and cheerleading right. both moved. In. It's called, it's, for the first time ever, just to give you a little background, for the first time ever, the MIAA in sports is now has the fourth season. So we've never <laughs> had that. We've always had the fall, yep. we've always had the winter, <laughs> and we've always had the spring. So the good news is, is that what they wanted to do was after the spring, and it was so devastating for our spring athletes mm-hmm. who didn't get to have that opportunity to play yeah. or uh, for some didn't get to finish their career or, oh, you yeah. know, or for some didn't get to start their career in a lot of ways. Um, but ultimately what they wanted to do was they wanted to try and ensure that at some piece that they could get some time. Yeah. Um, so that was a big part of the build. So they offered this fall to or a floating season as they're huh. really calling it. So it's again, it's about seven and a half weeks long. So mm-hmm. it'll give football and competitive cheer an opportunity to compete yeah. in a different season, but yet a chance to compete. Smart. So does the new start times um, affect how everybody's keeping safe? For school, you mean? Uh, or for the new seasons? For seasons. So I think that it's part of it. I think that each season, we, as you know, every season offers something different. Mm-hmm. You know, in the fall, it, we go from the, the hottest extreme to some of the coldest yeah, extremes exactly. in the, over a night. You know yeah. I mean? In the winter, we're just used to being winter. It's cold. It's flu season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now you're going to go into this middle of spring where if you weren't playing for a state championship at that part of the year, you probably were close to done. You know, so yeah. end of February was the end of sports unless you were in the, in the tournament. True. So, so that's kind of like the that's kind of I think the the place that they were really looking to be in. Mm. Um, but again, it gives you an opportunity to do those things. And, and on the plus side, if you're looking again, silver lining, if you will, it gives a student athlete an opportunity to play for the first time four seasons. Yeah. <laughs> so you can play, you know, you could play volleyball, you could or play soccer or run cross country or play golf in the in the fall. Yeah. Um, and then you could. Again, go away. You could be a cheer. You could cheer again now in that <laughs> season because you never have done it before. Or if you're a boys soccer player and you wanted to play football, but they've always been in the same season, now you can do both. Wow. So that's it's cool. Again, how many people will do that? Nobody really knows, but it's it's an opportunity that's never yeah. been there before. That's awesome. So, what are some of the different precautions or rules for each of the different risk groups? So, at the highest level right now, again, that's why we move them. So that's one of the biggest precautions that's been taken. They've yep. been moving in the hopes that. Um, better, better precautions can be maintained, mm-hmm. uh, that hopefully that, you know, something, you know, if there was a vaccine or anything, any of those things, all of those things are on the table for the highest risk. Of course. And then for moderate risk things, what we've done is again, f- things that r- every school is doing right now. It's the social distancing piece, which is, yeah. which is huge. Um, the wearing of masks mm-hmm. and things like that. And I, I think that people need to take that seriously Yes. A- and, and, and not just in, again, in everyday life. I mean, that's just something that I think if, it, if, if, the, if people are telling us that if doctors and everybody are telling us it makes a difference, I feel like you just should do yeah. it, right? But on the athletic fields, I think it's, it's super important because there's going to be that happy medium because in high level competition, you're going to be able to take your mask off. Okay. But when you're standing around with your friends and hanging out at practice and doing the things that we all do socially, yeah. You have to be able to put your mask on because the thing that everybody needs to remember is that this is not only worldwide is it a delicate situation, but for athletics right now, we found a way to build it back using smaller seasons. They're going to be way shorter. They might only play once a week. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're only going to play on one location. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to sanitize between everything. We're going to use new equipment when you can to move things in and out of games. Smart. Um, we're going to do all those things to take care of business. We're going to wipe down every surface. There will be nobody in the gyms when we play at times. Mm. So all of those things are precautions, but one group who decides that we're going to go do this and hang out together and somebody gets sick ends it all. Yeah. So that's One pasta fragil- party could be the end. <laughs> it, well, again, the fragility of all... But again, like there's that happy medium of I want to have a season because the camaraderie of the team is sometimes as important, yeah, if not more, it is. than the win, the loss, the this, the that. You know, it's the travel piece that makes it fun. It's the sitting around wearing, you know, 50 layers of clothes, laying <laughs> on a field, waiting for the next game. Yep. Like I get that. So I think that everything in, in, in moderation, if you will, will help us get there. Awesome. So you mentioned having to change the equipment or anything. How would that be modified? So right now, modifications are coming. So the MIA gave a week to the sport committees, and the sport committees are who makes the rules for certain sports. Mm -hmm. So what they're going to do is they're going to take each of the fall sports, and they're going to modify them using like the U.S. versions, and they're going to kind of look at all the big companies and all the big uh, leagues and things like that and see how they're modifying, and then they'll modify down to the high school level. Mm -hmm. So essentially what will happen is is that they'll turn around and they'll give us a list of modifications. For all the fall sports, if you look at the modifications and the modifications change the sport so much, it's up to schools to say we're either going to play it with the modifications yeah. or we can move it to the floating season. Hmm, okay. So right now, volleyball, perfect example. Okay. So volleyball is an indoor sport. It's one of the two indoor sports we play. So we play volleyball and we have uh, cheerleading inside, mm-hmm. yep. if you will, and we have swim. Yep. So swim right now is difficult because not for the action of swimming, but most school systems that have pools aren't opening and they're opening at all different oh, times. Yeah. So we use Shawshin Tech. Mm-hmm. So Shawshin is going to get their students situated. They want to make sure all their safety protocols are in order. Yeah. And that might not line up with when we're starting and how we get our safety oh, protocols. Yeah. So we might move swim to the floating season because it just, the pool's not going to be open. It's not mm-hmm. available to us. So we have some schools that are remote. We have some schools that are hybrid. We have some schools that are fully remote. Yeah. We have some schools that are fully back. Wow. <laughs> so knowing that all of those things are going on, if a school's fully remote, sometimes they're, they're, they, they're not letting anybody in their building, so they're not going to have volleyball going and play. Yeah. So that makes sense. Some schools that are hybrid are tearing their gymnasiums into cafeterias. Wow. <laughs> so it's very difficult to play volleyball. Yeah. around cafeteria. That's true. <laughs> so you have to take all those things into, into effect. So what we do as a league is we had a meeting, we had a conversation, and we put everything on the table. We met with superintendents, which was really great. It was, it was a great meeting, a very productive, a lot of questions back and forth. And then what we said is, you guys need to answer these 10 questions for us. And they told us we had to answer these 10 questions for them. Mm-hmm. And we got back together and we kind of threw all those things out. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to get, have a final meeting and we're going to decide where we're going to move. But there's a good chance that volleyball could move to the fall season or the floating season, if you will. Because again, if people are not doing, not opening their building or, or, and things like that. And then it was an easy separation between inside and outside. If we're playing outside, I think people feel safer. They feel if we're outside doing things, it's not being as confined, if Mm -hmm. you will. I think that people just overall feel better outside. Mm -hmm. And then when we bring people inside, was it Mm -hmm. worth the, the trouble? That makes sense. So, so when it comes to a sport like being inside and you need to move it to the floating season, does every team in the league need to just agree on that? We've agreed that we are going to handle it that way. Okay. So, so no. It, to answer your question, no. An individual school could choose to play volleyball. So Burlington could choose to play volleyball where Watertown, Melrose, and Stoneham could say we're not. Okay. So what we would do is we would then look at the rest of the league and say who's still playing and then we would play games against them. Okay. So... Right now, in this particular year, we are not going outside the league to find games. We're usually, Mm -hmm. you know, we play Bill Ricca or Mm -hmm. we play some other teams. So this year, because of lack of the travel piece and all those other things, we're trying to stay within the league because the season's going to be much shorter. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of teams to play in the league because the season's shorter. Yeah. Okay. So. So you mentioned having to wear masks on and off. Is there any other protective equipment that athletes need to wear? Or just that? So right now, I think the social distancing piece and the mask piece are the two mainstays that I think we all can agree that since COVID has started, those have really been the two. Um, I think those are the two big ones. There will be other protective measures. So for instance, there will be distancing on every bench. Yes. No matter what you're doing. So if we have to put two benches down and we have to tape off all the areas, we'll do all that. At every 
table, like volleyball, you guys have the table there, and, the sh and, and for different sports, there will be different, balls will come in and out, we'll clean them, we'll, we'll sanitize them at every table where anybody goes near it, as soon as people go near, on near it, any high traffic areas will be wiped down. That's right. So all of those things are gonna get built as a protocol that we'll follow more, but locker rooms are off limits. We're not gonna put anybody, like, cause locker rooms have a, spe a specific number. You can use 20% of the locker room or 30% mm. of the locker room. And you know, so, what, so what's gonna end up happening, and I, I referred this to the other day to, to my son when we were talking about it. I said, we're gonna go back. We're now high school athletes are gonna go back to like when they were younger and it's gonna be peewee sports again. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you when you show up to an event, you're gonna show up in what you need to go in. Yeah. Because you're not going to have an opportunity to go change in the locker room or do all those things. So we'll tape and do all those things as we would. And our trainers will have all that precautions set yeah. up to get you in, out, temperatures, do all the things that we need to do to get you safe there. Mm -hmm. And then when you go, you're going to be there dressed yeah. <laughs> in, your, in, your, in, your, in your finest, ready to go. So if you have a practice after school, do you go home, change, and then come back? Or? So again, I think that those are going to be the things that we're going to have conversations about. Because essentially what's going to happen is, is depending on where the school year actually ends, you know, because again, the full model hasn't even been necessarily approved to where yeah. we are yet. So once we get the, this is what we're doing, then we can build off it. We have two or three ideas of how we want to handle it right now. It's just, we're going to wait to see what the final product is. Smart. So how does transportation get affected through all of this? Well, again, like everything else, it's limited numbers. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it's funny. I said, um, you know, I was thinking about this ahead of time when, with uh, like, so boys and girls track, you know, when we look at boys and girls track, and now that's not till the winter season, but it's, you know, we have like almost 200 plus that's kids wha yeah. <laughs> that, that run. Into now, the good news with indoor track is, is that you have that kind of broken up a little bit because you can only compete in so many events, mm -hmm. if you would, um, at Reggie Lewis. But again, like thinking about those things, if we had to transport, wow. you know, with 13 or 14 people on a bus, Ooh. I mean, that's a school systems wide of busing to get to one event. You know, so I think that, we're gonna try and when we're when we're mapping out how we want to move into the future, we've put a lot of solutions in place where we're saying that you know uh, playing on a Saturday might be the answer. You know what I mean? So if we play on Saturday, it will allow people that we can still provide some transportation to those who need it. Mm -hmm. It will allow people to travel with you know in in as teams to not teams together in one car, but it will allow us to have parent transportation if needed. Yeah. It would allow us and again figuring out those. Parents driving people to games, but then they're not allowed to watch games. Oh, well, yeah. But again, in certain venues, you will be because, again, like if you look at our fields, um, you know, it, standing out on Cambridge Street or depending on where we set people up, there are still opportunities. If you're playing at Marshall Simons, you could park along the road. There are still opportunities mm -hmm. to watch games. So we have opportunities. It's just going to be how we can figure out what's the best case scenario. Yeah. So you mentioned the games only on Saturdays. So we only have, so we have fewer games in a season now? So right now, just to remember, the actual getting sports started is the biggest piece for us. That's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there are people out there who from the start have been saying, we play 20 games a year and we're going to stay with 20 games. And we're like, you're crazy. <laughs> like just to get you back in a uniform yeah. is my biggest goal. That, that's you know what smart. I mean? That's I good. do not care about the number of games that we play. We're not playing the fall season. There will be no state championships in the fall. Mm -hmm. You know, the MIA has already, that's my committee on the MIA. Mm -hmm. We've already made it very clear that there won't be state championships. There's not going to be big, long tournaments where you're traveling all over the place. Yeah. Because you just, you can't mitigate the, the problems. That makes sense, yeah. So we're going to play local games against our regular rival schools. <laughs> um, and like I said, if I can get Burlington athletes in Burlington uniforms out on Burlington fields, then we've succeeded. Yes. So has there been any pushback from coaches or trainers? No, really. I think I, I think that coaches, it, you know that you've been around this you know long enough to know that coaches here are passionate. Like they just want to. It's true. They <laughs> want to get out there and they want to do it. Like and if they could do it all year long, they would. And you know they you just want to you. There are so many things offered by our staff. You know what I mean? They want to be part. They they they're friendly with everybody they're trying to make sure everybody's doing the right thing they're trying to move you in the right direction yeah. you know they want to coach they want to be competitive um so i think that they're as eager as we are to get it off the ground i think that's probably the biggest detriment is that i think they're so eager to get going that we just you have to continue to say we got to slow it down yeah <laughs> because everything is a constant slowdown that's true so i and even myself like i'm ready to go right now where we could start tomorrow and then i think to myself you haven't done that's right. Anything on this page yet, never mind starting, so. 
So is there any changes with um, trainers or EMTs now with new safety precautions? I think there's changes with everybody. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I think the answer, I mean, yeah, I think that like, again, I feel like what's gonna happen is we'll have a set of protocols to use the training room. Mm -hmm. We'll have a set of protocols for trainers. And again, they are so good between, you know, uh, Ms. Bannon and Toda and all those guys. They're, again, we have professionals. That's the yes. best part about this. Like, we don't have somebody who comes in for two hours a day and just doesn't know anybody. You know what I mean? Like our trainers know all our kids. That's true. Which, which is a blessing. It's the, it's the greatest thing in the world. And there are people who struggle to find trainers, but you know, because we can build relationships with kids, I think that makes a huge difference. And I think that the protocols that we put in place will only be better. We have great protocols for heat. We have great protocols for, for lightning. We have great and things that people don't even know about. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, why would you? Because we don't use them very often, but we the coaches are trained in them. The trainers are trained in them and, and we've put them in place to make everybody safer. So this COVID piece will just be another piece in the toolbox that we will be prepared for when our kids go on the field. Awesome. So what kind of changes do referees have to make? I, well, this is one of the biggest, I think this is probably might be the biggest um, piece because again, you know, we're listening to the governor and we're listening to all the, you know, the Department of Education and there, a lot of our referees are in the highest risk category. Ooh. So I think that is something that we're starting to see play out right now because a lot of people who, again, for great reasons, not that they're sick or anything, like, and, and most of these referees are in tremendous shape who are, are ready to go, but because they're in, you know, a lot of referees are retirees, a lot of referees are people who work after, you know, they work during the day and they come out and do yeah. stuff for us in the evening and things like that. I think a lot of referees are thinking to themselves that like, listen, you know, I want to see how this is going to go and I might, if I'm a little older, I want to be, I want to be safe, I want to be cautious, so I'm going to sit out the year. Mm. So I think that once game schedules start to come out and we have a really good idea of where we're going to go, we'll get those things out there and I think that what you're going to see is there's going to be a good group of people that say, I'm all set for this year mm -hmm. and then we'll see where we are. But I think that could be a little bit of a, it could yeah. be an issue. Could maybe. be a little shaky. Well, again, it just may be that we have to play a game, and you know, instead of playing a game at nine o'clock in the morning, we may have to play a game at, at one o'clock in the afternoon because yeah. they have to do a game here and they have to do a game here. Mm -hmm. Nothing they haven't already done, but it just may put a. But again, it could be nothing. Maybe people just say, "I'm, I'm in," or maybe they say, "I'm out." Yeah. We'll just have to see where it goes. Okay. So if one person on the team tests positive, does how does that affect the rest of the season? So the protocols are, again, in place where we've had these conversations with the Board of Health and you'll have these conversations with our nurse leaders and we'll have all these conversations. We'll have a plan in place for those things. So again, somebody testing positive, then that goes to a circle around them. Mm -hmm. And then there are protocols that it's kind of, it's that concentric circle, if you will, like you drop a pebble in the water and you see the oh, circle yeah. get bigger. So that's what you're gonna see in athletics. That's what you're gonna see in the classroom. That's what you're gonna see in the hallways. That's what you're gonna see everywhere. When the good part for us is this, we've really thought about tracing. That's been a big piece of putting athletics, especially here in Burlington in the Middlesex League. Tracing has been one of the number one things that we've considered. So essentially, that's why we're considering having games either by, by you know, in locations that we know where everybody is. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be able to say that if, if girls soccer is playing a game at this location, these will take all the rosters, we'll have both rosters, we'll have them copied for each other, we'll know exactly who's playing, if we mitigate this stuff to one game, if to games to one game per week, it actually helps us because it, let's say that if we're on the same team and you got sick, God forbid you got sick, and I was with you the whole time, then I would say, okay, in your circle, these are the three or four people because you have to be around somebody mm -hmm. for an extended period of time under these kinds of yeah. situations. So again, we would check off all the boxes and let's say that we both checked off enough boxes that both of us would have to be quarantined. Then what we would do is, because we're only playing once a week, the good news would be, is that we could legitimately quarantine those who are sick and follow the guidelines, mm -hmm. or we could quarantine our whole team if we had to and still follow the guidelines. Yep. We would miss the next week's game, which is the way it goes, you yep. know what I mean? And then maybe the other team would do the same to mirror us, but the teams that they were supposed to play or we were supposed to would just play each other so they wouldn't miss a game. Oh, smart. So we've kind of built it in so we're fine. But the contact tracing was a big piece for us. We yeah. wanted to make sure, because again, when you're out on fields, there could be a million people. Mm -hmm. And there won't be, but you never know who walks by, who was here, who stops exactly. by. Exactly. Because some of our fields are, you know, hard to get into and some of our fields are just fields. They're <laughs> wide open and anybody can walk in. Exactly. So we have to, we're trying to figure out all those things. Yeah. Do you have to minimize or reduce teams this year or anything like that? Some travel could be minimized. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Some because again, the the state is going to put guidelines on on how you do it, and again, it depends on the risk factors that you're in. Like, so if you're in the high risk category, you might only be uh, X amount of people on the field at one time, and they have to be 14 feet apart and not six oh, feet yeah. apart, and they can only work in groups of four. So there's a huge flow chart, <laughs> if you will, that we'll have to we'll figure out. Oh as we yeah, go. that makes sense. So would a physical from the doctor would that anything with that need to change? Right now, no. It's the physical is physical. If you don't have physical, you don't play. Okay, makes sense. That's we don't we don't, ch don't change the basic rules. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. That the, that still works. The problem would be, again, there are some things that are have become harder. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because now a doctor might not see you because it's a visit. Mm -hmm. It's a physical, so they might teleconference you or something like that. So those are the kinds of things that we don't know how we'll be affected with it yet. So I know that there was a group that went to the state and they said, can we move the physical date change? Like it's 13 months now. They wanted to try and move it to 18 months. It didn't get passed. They said it wasn't, it was too much on the backside, safety, health and safety. Okay. So I think it's still going to be 13 months. You still have to get your physical in. And to be honest with you, when I came up here, I want to say we had probably almost, I want to say it was close to 200 plus people signed up for fall sports already. And we haven't even said we're doing them yet. <laughs> I signed up, I know right, that. That's so that's like, it's, it's crazy, you know what I mean, so. Yeah, so how would tryouts be affected? So again, I don't, I, I, I think that tryouts depending on the sport. So again, numbers are going to be, your practices, your tryout times could be longer. Mm -hmm. It could be, we're only having seniors for the first part, we're only having juniors for the second part, mm -hmm. we're only having sophomores, then we're only having freshmen. Yeah. They may be way shorter in time, but longer in length. If that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. You know what I mean? So you might try out for a, for a week this year where last year you tried out for two or three days. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you might go a full week, but the good news is is the, the start of the spring season, excuse me, the start of the fall season, we're, even with that, it's going to be uh, lengthened the amount of time that you have to practice. You have to practice, still have to practice for 14 days. Yeah. So those tryout days will still count. Okay. And then you'll have your varsity. So right now, uh, scheduled wise, we wouldn't even play our first varsity event until October 3rd. Wow. How's that? That's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So um, are injury, injury procedures changing or anything like that? Or anything with sports medicine changing? I, just, I think the difference is, again, it's just how you'll be approached. There'll be more rubber gloves. More face masks and, yeah. and, and, and more uh, uh, germexing when we're all done. But again, the washing the hands thing, we're going to have hand washing stations everywhere we can. Again, without having the use of the locker rooms, um, I think that takes away a level of things. But again, hand washing, you're going to wash your hands more with us than you probably do normally <laughs> now. Because again, just because every time you walk by one of the hand washing stations, they're going to be put in a space because you have to walk by it before you walk through the door. Yeah. And you're, everybody's gonna stand there and everybody's gonna germex, everybody's gonna hand wash. When you go in the gym, you're gonna know that every chair was wiped down. You're gonna know every table was cleared. And then when you go in and you use it, then at the end of that game, that team is going to leave. And when they walk out, they are gonna walk out through that disinfecting station before yep. they go to their next spot. And then you are gonna walk out through this disinfecting station <laughs> to guarantee that you've done your due diligence before you walk out your door yeah. to get back in your car. And then I'm hoping that you do the same thing when you get home. Yep. Because <laughs> you know, again, those are the protocols that we're gonna have to get used to. And it's, it's gonna be the lack of discipline, which athletes are really good at having most of the time that will send this thing into a spiral. And I think that if we do it well, we can do it well. Yeah, so do athletes have to do like temperature checks or do surveys or anything like that? So I think that that's all part of what we're building for the protocols. When we sit with the with our with our training staff and, and with nurse, nurse leadership and stuff like that, that will be a document. But I just actually got a training document. Uh, Ms. Bannon sent me a training document literally last night wow. that I was looking over um, and we were kind of going over it. It's a checklist of things that need to be done. But I think that again, we're hopefully as a league going to put in some parameters that every league location will follow. Mm -hmm. Because again, you know that you've been to enough buildings to know that some schools do it really well yep. and some schools don't do it as well. Mm -hmm. So when you walk in, you're like, ah, you know, you're kind of, there's, we want to set the expectation where every single school is doing the exact same thing so there's no difference when you walk in. Smart, yeah. Because, well, again, and then it forces you habit. You know, I, mm -hmm. if we force habits in every building because if you know when you walk in, you have your temperature checked before you walk in the building, then you're disinfecting, then you're walking into the building and then you're disinfecting and then you're disinfecting and then you're washing and you're, yeah. like, you'll just do it by routine. It's like practice. You'll do everything the same way in practice. Smart. So. 
So now with all the social distancing guidelines, how will spectators be allowed to watch? Great question. <laughs> so I think right now um, the state guidelines have made it kind of all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so in some outdoor venues, they're allowed, you have to be social distanced the whole time unless you're a family. Uh, you have to be masked the entire time. If you're, even if you're outside and socially distanced at a game, you have to be wearing a face covering. Oh, wow. So if somebody decides they don't want to wear it, then it puts people in a, a position where now you have to say you have to go because they don't want anyone to be uncomfortable at any time, if you will. So if they figured if everybody's doing it, then there's less yeah. angst, I guess, more than anything else. Um, so they're going to have all of these protocols put. But in some things, there's no fans at all. So we don't know where we're going to fall on that spectrum yet. Some communities, even if Burlington was allowed to have fans, some communities may not have fans because they just might be, their board of health might say, it's, we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. So I think that as a league, we're going to try and to have that discussion. But on the good side of it, again, we have some great technology. We're using it right now. Um, we're hoping that we can have a partnership with BCAT. We're hoping that we're going to get some people at BCAT involved in live streaming our events. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, if we have to close, if we're playing a volleyball game at Burlington and there's no fans allowed, that we will have it live being covered right then and there with some commentary and awesome. being able to watch the game. Well, again, I think it's like, I think there's some good things that come out of this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, there are somebody's, uh, grandmother or somebody's aunt that lives in a different part of the country that would like nothing more than to watch you play a game. Yeah. And if we can send them a YouTube or a Facebook link and now that they can watch every one of your games or, you know, if we can build some of those things into better technology because, I mean, we, we have great technology and BCATS like does yeah. so much stuff, you know, mm -hmm. already. So if we can just add a level to that that puts us in a position where we're like ABC sports, we're going to be great. That'd be awesome, yeah. <laughs> So do you think it's possible for a season to stop midway through a season? Absolutely. It's my biggest fear. Oh, yeah. Well, again, you know, yeah. and we just we talked about it at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. You have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Exactly. We could build this whole plan to start school tomorrow and what could happen? It just all stops. I'll see you on Zoom. Uh, exactly. Right? Like, we'll see you on Zoom. So I think that that's part. So I get, the good news is this. So what we did build in, especially for the fall, is if we were to start, Let's say we started, you know, boys and girls soccer and whatever else we're going to start in the fall. We start in the fall and let's say we get three games in and they tell us we have to stop or they tell us we have to slow down or they say, listen, a couple of kids are getting sick. We're, we're done. We're, it's not working for us. We would take all of those sports, no matter how many games that they played in that fall season, we'd move everything to the fall too. Mm, smart. So everything would just get dumped into the fall too. So everything would be made up? And start at the beginning. Oh, okay. Just move over. Just we'll build a new schedule and we'll stick it in that spot and Brand you'll just new start season. again. Done. Wow. Okay. So that's a luxury we have for the fall, but again, when you think about it, like not necessarily a luxury we have for the winter, though. Oh yeah. And not necessarily a luxury we have for the spring. That's true. So these are the things that that's why I say if we don't do it well here, it's not going to matter back there. That's true. So that's why it's so important. I mean, how bad? Like, and I keep saying this, how bad? Does a student athlete in the fall want to do something in the winter? And mm -hmm. how bad does somebody in the winter want to do something in the spring? Because the minute you start taking your masks off in the locker room, or not locker room, but outside the locker yeah. room, or waiting for a bus, the minute you guys want to, everybody wants to go someplace and do something, and the minute people aren't following the basic things and one, two, three kids get sick, yeah, everything stops. Ooh. So again, like I just say it's, and it's not about me. It's, yeah. it's about... We have an ability to mildly control some of these things, even at the smallest level. So we got to do everything we can to make sure we get to the next one. Yeah. So. So what's your biggest concern with starting up sports? I, I think that it's the fear of the unknown. Yeah. You know what I mean? And again, like I say this all the time, like we are working so hard to put our student athletes in the best positions for everything, for their college moving forward for having a season, for just enjoyment. I know that, again, I have a 15-year-old sophomore um, daughter at home in high school, and I have a, a, who, a rising sophomore in college at home. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had these conversations. Like, again, they're, they're missing out on their activities. They're home, you know, you know Zooming on their, in their rooms with yeah. friends and buddies and, you know, uh, you know, 
my son is still working and my daughter is not. So I think that you you miss your friends, you miss your buddies, you miss the camaraderie that that we all crave, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think sports is a huge outlet for that. And I think that like we build some of our biggest and best relationships ever by, you know, in sports. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of that scenario. So I think my biggest fear is is that if we have to stop, if we have to stop again, and mm-hmm. we all start to lose some of those things again. Yeah. But I think even bigger than that, I, again, I'd give it all up. I, I'd give every. I'd put it a stop right now. I'd give it all up if we could say that everybody would just be healthy again. Yeah. And and not afraid of all these little things. I'd just be like, we're, I'm totally fine with being done for the whole year, mm-hmm. if it made everyone but in our community safe again. Exactly. I and think then we you all could would. get back to it normal again. We'll future. figure it out when we have to figure it out. Exactly. So. It'll come back at some point. No doubt, no doubt. Exactly. So what do you hope to see with students and teachers when we do return? I think that I think it's a mix. I think for me personally, I think, again, it's all about relationships. Yep. It's about relationships and communication. You know what I mean? We, we you have such a great, we, we have such a great athletic department. Um, we have such close knit, I get, you know, I say this to our coaching staff all the time. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I, I said, I'm going into my sixth year here. I said, I'm very fortunate I walked into a staff that has, even when they are at odds about something, about this little thing that's aggravating our staff, they're still a staff. They still respect each other. They still Mm -hmm. help each other. They're still communicating with each other. I said, and I've been in buildings where two coaches would never talk to each other. Yeah. We don't have that here. And I think that that's Again, you want the best athletes in your program and you want the best prog- you know, the best program we can offer and all those things. And all that's part of being athletic and being competitive by what we do. Mm-hmm. But we have a great staff here building those relationships. I want the coaches to be able to have that opportunity. Again, I want the, the student athletes to be able to have that. And yeah. I think when you see it, all, and that's the best part for me, is when you get to sit back and watch it happen, like everybody's like, oh, what? you weren't at this, you were, you're you not doing this, you're not, at, you, you just get to watch it all. Yeah. And when you see it work and it's all working, you know it's good. Best feeling. Right, you know it's good. Yeah. So. Awesome. Is there anything that I didn't ask about that you want to talk about or no, have we covered I, it? I feel like you covered everything. I feel like there's a whole bunch of question marks and yeah. we'll just make it up as we go. Sometimes there's so many questions <laughs> that I don't even know what else to ask. No, I think, listen, the good news is, is I think that we're, we're a step closer. Yes. We're a step closer. Agree. You know what I mean? And I think that, I think there's going to be some angst to the startup. I think there's going to be some angst to sports. I think there's going to be some angst to everything we do. Yeah. But I think that if we just sit back and remember that we've never done it before Mm -hmm. and if we do it well, great. If we do it not well, we'll figure it out and we'll make some adjustments, but just have patience with everybody. Of course. You know, and a little flexibility is not going to hurt anybody. And I think that we've done it really well here. And I think that we're doing everything that we've done is I know as an administrative staff here, has been done with the safety of the students and the staff it has been concerned. And I know that sometimes that gets lost in things because you're so yeah. anxious about what you're doing and stuff like that. But ultimately, I, I think that that's the, there's been a lot of work that's gone into just trying to make sure that people have an opportunity. And yeah. I think that's all we care about. I'd agree with that. So. Awesome. So thank you so much for talking to me today. You're this welcome. has been great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we'll be right back. <laughs> not hide it. We will not hide it. We embrace ambition. Women are made to be ambitious. I will dream big. Big. Without hesitation. We will take risks. Not live in fear. We will rise together. Rise above the negativity. No longer will ambition in a woman be be seen seen as as a negative. negative. We will model ambition for our daughters. I will help women around the world. The whole world. To succeed. Women are tough. Strong. Powerful. Ambition is feminine. Ambition is empowering. Ambition is not a dirty word. Ambition is sexy. Ambition is very sexy. What's your ambition? To help women build empires. Help more women run for office. Empower women financially. To compete equally in sports. For all of us to lean in together. To transform societies. Change the world. Own your power. Own your power. Own your dreams. No judgments. No No judgments. judgments. We own it. Take the pledge. Embrace ambition. Embrace ambition. Will you? And that's all for this month's B News Sports Hub. I would like to thank my guest, Burlington Athletic Director Sean Hart. I'd also like to thank you for watching. I've been your host, Liz Gillespie, and we'll see you next time on B News Sports Hub.